most known for, but not the only thing we do. I wonder if we just need to keep it in advance. That seems Day. pertinent. Um, for people who did not grow up in Seattle in the 90s, like myself and Puck and Lord Andrian, um, we came, oh, there it goes. We came out through the teen dance ordinance. We were a politically active motivated group that started as a house show, um, or show house. And, oh, okay. <laughs> and now, um, since 2007, we had a capital campaign. We're now all of a sudden boosted to this capacity of 350 capacity in Seattle Center, basically across the way. You should feel free to check us out. But we are an all ages space that allows for creation and trying new projects. So for Veracity Committee, what we do is we put on a free all-ages show once a month. Um, it also comes with a free meal, which is something that we've kind of developed from the past. It hasn't always been free, but now I feel like it's a staple to our shows. Um, it's booked by uh, members of ERA and anyone who would like to volunteer. Um, so it's booked by the Veracity Committee, and it's totally open to everyone. Um, so what we do, as I said, we book a free local show. Um, as as well as doing that, we also create a tight-knit community. Um, I love seeing people who go to one Veracity show for their friends band come back again. Maybe it's just because of the burritos, the free Chipotle, <laughs> but it might be because they feel safe with the space. That's something that Vera prides itself on, definitely. So the process of booking shows. Um, it used to be really based on email. Just um, People would email uh, veracity at the um, They would send us their music. Um, now I'm trying to kind of spread it out among the members of Veracity, um, going to shows, seeking out different bands for, uh, for the younger stu for the younger members, like uh, kids at their high school who just um, have started a band and wanted to play a free show. And this leads into um, the kind of bands that we do like to book. Um, we, we try to uh, keep Veracity a like a really good experience for the younger bands that have not had um, the opportunity to play bigger shows. Um, something that we really like to do is uh, kind of get a big, not a big headliner, but someone that already kind of has an established, po established position in the Seattle uh, local music scene so that the openers can have a positive experience for their first show or second show like that. Mm -hmm. And then how we do it, we do that, we do that with posters and promotions. Um, we actually are playing our first main stage show next week on Wednesday. Um, and I'm currently trying to expand the committee um, so that we can have some help from our silk screen committee up there as well um, so we can get more official posters, but right now it's just based uh, on volunteers who would like to um, share their our experience. Oh, and this is where I jump back in. Mm -hmm. um, so as we moved from a show house to something that's been legitimate um, in its you know, legal and accessible to all kinds of different people. Um, we've grown into a bit more of a nonprofit structure. That means we take donations always, we have volunteers, um, we do a lot of fundraising that's a little more traditional. We get giant checks sometimes for tiny amounts, and sometimes <laughs> tiny checks for big amounts. Um, and we also work with Seattle Foundation. Um, and we just encourage people to give, but we encourage um, local businesses to give, we hold parties, sometimes people like those parties, um, and we just try to build relationships with all of the amazing people within Seattle so that we, we stay locally focused. And others, other similar organizations, um, such as Red Room Tacoma, um, unfortunately they're actually having their last show next week, um, but they have been a, um, an all-ages music venue for quite a while. Um, they provided that local music scene to Tacoma um, where it's been trying to uh, grow and like move on past that. And that's kind of what I want to do with Veracity, kind of combine the scenes and combine the um, so combine similar organizations so that it's a lot harder for them just to follow their own. Um, Black Lodge is one very popular, um, just like a few minutes from here, yeah, in downtown Seattle. Um, we Black Lodge um, is similar to us in the fact that they're an all-ages venue. Um, they're very flexible with the price and um, I just feel like um, for a venue like that, it's really helpful, especially um, the bands that come in um, might not have, like like fans might not have um, enough money to pay at the door, but they're still able to experience the, the music. And then down south a little bit in Centralia, there's also this place called the Quesadilla Factory. It's all ages as well. It kind of switches things up from their rare project. Um, they have delicious $5 quesadillas. If you're ever in Centralia, you should go there and go see a show. Um, they also have an, an arcade. so. Um, it's completely volunteer run as well. Um, of course, there's someone like making the quesadillas taste as good as they are. But um, yeah, it's very similar to Vera, and I've been 
uh, trying to get bands who play the Quesadilla Factory and play Black Lodge and play Red Room to all come to Seattle and kind of uh, start the scene from there. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is reach out to other organizations that are like-minded so that we can mentor them, they can mentor us, that we can really combine all of our collective power to share artists, to share resources, and there are some others that we're talking to, the Northern Olympia is a big one, um, there's a safe amp up in Vancouver, and then there's, um, you know, local places in here uh, that are not technically legal yet, so I don't want to mention them just yet, but you can come up afterwards and we can talk about those. But um, what we're trying to do is work with everybody within our regional area and provide a real force for change to create all these shows where they're independently run, independently booked, allowing for signing scale, allowing for people's needs, potentially providing food for people who may not be able to have that source of food from wherever they're coming from. So that's what we're doing. And we collaborate within Vera as well. I talked about our subcommittee, we talked about um, our gallery. What we try to do is have everybody talk to each other at our programming committees because we're all member and volunteer run so that they can pick up on each other's different projects and really share their resources that way too. Thank you for doing this, by the way. Um, we also collaborate with organizations I mentioned in Seattle. Here's a few of them. A lot of them are music related. Um, but we're also starting some social justice programming as well, so we really try to make sure that we're reaching out instead of just looking inwards all the time and saying, yes, we're okay, and just drifting on our reputation. Little side note, um, Veracity and Folklife actually um, collaborated for this year's Folklife on Memorial Day weekend. Um, you can see a couple of Veracity bands that are going to play. Mm -hmm. Why does this work? Uh, lots of meetings. Mostly, lots, so many meetings, so many snacks, keeping us going. Um, but we do have a large community. We have about 70 members at the moment, and we have support, um, even if it's just moral support from the community at large. So, being 350 people venue, taking donations from Chipotle, are we still DIY? Yes. yes. <laughs> Why? Because we're not attached to major corporations. We are not beholden to anyone, and the most we actually receive from any corporation are some burritos that are even vegan. <laughs> and a lot of that is built up on personal relationships we've um, developed with these people at these organizations. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just like a business, like we talk to them as like a business head or something like that. It's kind of a more personal, like, you should come to one of the shows, check out there, see um, if there's anything you'd like to contribute. And everything that we take as a sponsorship goes through our steering youth leadership committee as well, made up of members. So they're, they act as our immune system. So this is how we do it ourselves. We have the, Vera has the space, volunteers provide the energy, um, we talk through everything that we do so much, and that we really take everyone's temperature to make sure that what we're doing feels okay by our nonprofit standards, but also every member's standards as well. What this means is that we're not a teen center, we're not top down, we're not a show house. We have uh, gender neutral restrooms, we have access um, for people of varying abilities, and that we are able to stay legal in a way that makes sure that our members can provide all of the programming that they choose to provide. And we also try to make sure our audiences stay stay safe. So what we're looking into now are different ways to make sure people get home from shows safely, especially because a lot of people that come are very targeted audience or targeted people for people looking to get some money or something out of them. So we're looking at walking people to their cars or to the bus from shows, getting some potential taxi vouchers, if you have some ideas there, help us out. But then just trying to make sure that we care for our audiences in the way that they care for us. Who belongs there? Everyone. <laughs> um, and that includes all types of shows. We have our gallery, and we want to make sure that all ages doesn't just mean young people, because I learn from younger people, I learn from older people. The idea is that you can mentor at any age and with any ability level, pretty much. If you're, you're an expert on everything else in veracity, and I learn from you, so hopefully maybe you learn something from me. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely a good point, because um, when a lot of people think all ages, they uh, generally think that's youth-based. Youth um, and I also get that question a lot, like via phone or email, because I'm the I'm the front desk intern. So I, I often get um, calls from like potential volunteers who will be like, oh, like I am like 37, and I was wondering like what the age limit is on the volunteers, and I'm like, there's there's no age limit. Yeah, everyone bring.
doing something. Mm -hmm. And is that fun? And that's it for us. And we'll be hanging around afterwards too. So if you have any questions or anything.